Shalom, most high Christ bless. Good morning to you. few more minutes before we get started. with you all. We're going to start in a few more minutes. Can everybody see it here? Christ bless to you all. <laughs> oh, brother Josiah, my brother. Shalom, shalom, most high Christ bless. I'm also the bar. I see Las Vegas. Um, all praise the most high. We're still alive. Hmm. Through all of this chaos, 
But uh, we're going to get started with the prayers. Face Jerusalem, brothers, uncover your heads. Sisters, cover your heads. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Oh, all oh, praises. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brother Josiah. Yes, yes. You you can be described. All oh, praises. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, in this day of the pandemic. I wonder, ask yourself, this is the title of the class, Will the Lord Choose You? Will the Lord Choose You? That is the title of the class. Something to really meditate on. Um, keep hearing, I keep hearing these reports brothers and sisters bugging out, um, especially fall, fall into fornication. What the hell, man? Come on. Really? Um, Israel is hard-headed. So the question begs, will the Lord choose you? Um, We start at hmm, Second Corinthians thirteen and five. Second Corinthians thirteen and five. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I gotta read this disclaimer. Sorry, let me before I get started. I gotta read this. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat as stated in Leviticus 5 and 1. Okay. Now to the class. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? So we must constantly examine ourselves. Daily, moment to moment. Looking at ourselves in the mirror. The spiritual mirror, especially called the Bible. Am I doing what the Lord is what is pleasing to the Lord? Did I do that right? And being honest with yourself. That's one of the hardest things for us is to be honest with ourselves. You know, we're trying to fool everybody else, but are you really honest with yourself? So, we have to examine ourselves. Um, we have to really, really examine ourselves. Hold on a minute. Uh, let's go to Psalms 32 and 5. 
Psalms 32 and 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Selah. Are we confessing our faults, our sins to the Lord? Are we doing that? Or are we faking the funk? You can't hide from the Lord. You know that, right? Okay. So examine yourself. Am I, am I all right? Did I do that right? Hmm. Let's go to second address. Nine and one. Second Ezra's nine and one. Just don't uh, forget about the topic. Second Ezra's nine and one. He answered me then and and said, "Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the signs pass." which I have told thee before. Then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the earth, the world, I'm sorry, visit the world which he made. So the Lord is going to visit the world. He's going to visit it. And when he visits, it's not with uh, candy and bubbles. When he visits, there's destruction coming. Verse 3. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. Hmm. Let's hold it, hold right there. Let's go to Isaiah 46 and 10. Isaiah 46 and 10. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. The Most High did that from the beginning. He declared the end from the beginning in the beginning and his counsel shall stand. His scripture will not be broken. So the Lord said it will happen. It will happen. You could best assure of that. The Lord is true to his word. Uh, it brings me to, um, oh, hold on, man. Um, go to second Peter three and nine. Second Peter three and nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but he is long suffering to us, us to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He's talking about the Israelites, not everybody in the world. This is about the Israelites. I'll read that again. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to, to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Let's go back to second address nine and four again. Second address nine and four.
Then shalt thou understand that the Most High spake of those things from the, from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. Hmm. Even so, the times also the highest have plain beginnings in wonders and powerful works and endings in effects and signs. And every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed. Alrighty then. Now, this is why uh, our people need to get out of those churches ASAP. Because Rev says it's by faith only, not by works. So now our people are deceived into thinking all I have to do is have faith. And I'm saved. Well, okay. If you're saved, what are you saved from? We are on the bottom of society. We live in the worst neighborhoods. We're still getting gunned down by the police and each other. So what are you saved from? What are you saved from? Um... Let's go to 2nd Ezra 8 and 33. 2nd Ezra 8 and 33. For the just, which have many good works laid up with thee, shall out of their own deeds receive reward. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I'm going to read that one again. Second Ezra 8.33 For the just, which have many good works laid up with thee, shall out of their own deeds receive reward. Hmm. You know, um, there's some Israelites who claim to be in the truth still believe that that they don't it's just by faith alone it's not by works and faith let's go to James 2 and 15 James 2 and 15 Uh, if anybody has any questions, write your questions down. I'll take questions at the end of class. James 2.15 If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding, ye give him not those things that are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Hmm. Faith without works is dead. Being so faith, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith. By my works, thou and thou it says thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Hmm. It says the devils also believe and tremble. Hmm. So wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works 
when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar. So the Lord told Abraham, sacrifice your son. And Abraham loved Isaac. Abraham loved him. Verse 22, seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works has faith made perfect? Hmm. Hmm. Y'all get, get the point? I'm going to read on. And the scripture was fulfilled with which saith, Abraham believed God that it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Could you imagine being called the friend of God? Walking with God? He walks with you? He considers you his friend? Why? Because Abraham was obedient, willing to sacrifice his own son. Willing to sacrifice his own son because the Lord told him to. And the Lord stopped him, said the angel said, stop him. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but stop him. Abraham was obedient. Hold on. We're coming back to James. Go to Luke 14 and 26. Luke 14 and 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children, and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, it doesn't mean literally hates, but hate their ways. Hate their ways. Hmm. Are you willing to do that? How many of you are willing to do that? To follow Christ, give it all up to follow Christ. Hmm. That's a question you should ask yourself. You mean to tell me I gotta give up my family? They not following the Lord? If they're still following the wicked ways of this world? and follow what Christ says? Hmm. Let's go back to James 2 and 23 again. James 2 and 23. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. What does imputed mean? What does imputed mean? It's not a Negro word. But what does imputed mean? What the hell is this? Hold on a minute, y'all. Hold on a minute. Oh, Lord have mercy. Just give me a few minutes, y'all. 
What the hell, man? You see, um, Satan is always busy. Just, just give me a few minutes. Hold on. What the hell, man? Oh. oh, where was I? Oh, imputed. What does imputed mean? What does imputed mean? I have the definition. Um, <laughs> anyway, anyway, let me get back to class. Stay in the spirit. Yes, sir. stay in the spirit. Um, imputed definition is to give to credit or ascribe something to a person or a cause that credit them with this righteousness. Abraham was credited for righteousness for what? Faith and belief. Faith and and works. Verse um, James 2 and 24. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, <clears throat> so faith without works is dead also. Faith without works is dead. All praise. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Uh, let's go back to second Ezra 9. 9 and 9. Eight now. Well, I'll read seven again. I'll read seven again. Second Ezra is nine and seven. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed, shall be preserved from the said perils, and shall see my salvation in my land, and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Whoa. Whoa. Says the says I have sanctified them from the beginning. Hold this. Go to Sirach 1 and 14. Sirach 1 and 14. To fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom that it was created with the faithful in the womb. Hmm. I'm going to read that again. To fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, that it was created with the faithful in the womb. Hmm. Let's go to Jeremiah 1 and 5. Jeremiah 1 and 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. 
and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. Hmm. What what is the what are these scriptures saying? What are these scriptures saying? What <clears throat> excuse me, what are these scriptures saying? What say you? What are these scriptures saying? Man, oh man, oh man. <laughs> um, I'm going to read some of these answers. The righteous are already accounted for. It's a fixed fight. That we were chosen. That we were, uh, maybe. Oh, they were, that we were chosen before the foundation of the world. God has already made his selection. Works. Those that were chosen were from the beginning. Hmm. Y'all get the um Y'all get the basic idea, right? Huh. <clears throat> so you all you realize that and and I'm, again, we don't know. We don't know who they are. Well, let me just say this. We don't know who the chosen are. We don't know who the two thirds are. So don't go around pointing fingers saying he's the two thirds. For that matter, the apostle Paul could have been the two thirds. But after he was converted, he became one of the most powerful apostles on the earth. So be very mindful. Be very mindful. We are all chosen to play our part on the earth. You are all chosen to play our part on the earth. The Lord's created those that will follow him from the beginning. From the beginning. He also created the wicked, the rebels. I'm, I'm talking about the rebels now. The rebel of Israel. The rebels of Israel were picked as well. And when they were created, they said, yes, Lord, we'll do that. Hmm. Huh. Uh, go to Second Edges nine and eighteen. Second Edges nine and eighteen. I, I can hear somebody now. Well, that's not right, really. Lord will do whatever he wants. Second Edges nine eighteen. And now when I prepare the world, 
which was not yet made, even for them to dwell in that now live, no man spake against me. Hmm. What does that mean? That no man spake against me. Hmm. You're going to be faithful. You're going to be righteous. You're going to follow the Lord. Yes, Lord. You're going to be the rebels that go against the Lord. Yes, Lord. So in the spirit world, we all agreed. We all agreed. Um, let that marinate a little bit. Let's go to John 15 and 26. John 15, 26. Someone say, that's scary. I pray I'm amongst the one third. Yeah, it is scary and it should be. It should be. Yeah. Hmm. John 15, 26. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the father, he shall testify of me. Verse 27, and ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. Hmm. Verse 27 again, and ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. Those who follow Christ, back again. Those who are, who are rebel against him, back again. Hmm. Hold on. Just, just, just think about that. Ha! Boom. Um, the Lord is a mastermind. Um, hold on a minute. What time is it? Do we have time? I'll make time. Go to um, stay in John. John 14 and 15. John 14 and 15. Wow. That's why we need to examine ourselves daily. Hmm. John 14 and 15. If he love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him for he dwelleth with you it shall be in you. Hmm. Wow. Oh, man. Um, verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. This is Christ talking. Verse 19, yet a little while, yet a little while, and the world seeth me not. Um, I'm sorry, my Bible's jacked up. I got a, yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. 
Um, for you, uh, brothers and sisters, um, a good book is a used book. And you know, this is the example. But I'll read that scripture again. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me. Because I live, ye shall live also. At that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Hmm. That day. Ye that day. Hmm. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him, to those that keep the commandments. Hmm. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, not Judas Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thy, thyself unto us and not unto the world? Verse 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we, we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Hmm. I hope you are all staying with this. Verse 24. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the world which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. So if you love the Lord, if you love Christ, you will keep the commandments. And the Most High and Christ will come to you, will receive you. Hmm. Verse 25, these things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. Verse 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Uh, so the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, who's the comforter? Another question. Who is the comforter? Who is the comforter? Hmm. Um, I know we've gone through this scripture several times, several times, but who is the comforter? Okay. It's good answers. Hmm. All right, the comforter, the spirit of Christ. Yes, the spirit of Christ. Remember uh, verse 26 again, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. The comfort is the spirit of Christ. It's this 
Bible that we have, the Spirit of Christ. And he will come unto you, those, but how will he come to you if you obey his commandments? The word of God, yes. Hmm. But in the church, Christian church, modern day Christian church, they say they got the Holy Ghost and they jump it up and down and foam at the mouth. Hmm. Yeah, but, but the Holy Ghost, the law of God gives us also discipline. Gives us discipline. Hmm. Hold on. Wisdom of Solomon 1 and, let's see, I want to start. Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 1. Just going to read, go through it. Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 1. Hmm. Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 1. Love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. Think of the Lord with a good heart, and in simplicity of heart, seek him. Seek him. In order to follow the Lord, righteousness, you must, it says, and in simplicity of heart, seek him. It's not complicated. Just do what he says. Just do what he says. Verse 2. For he will be found of them that tempt him not, and showeth himself unto such as do not distrust him. Um, hold this. Go to Proverbs 30 and 5. Is it 30 and 5? Yes, Proverbs 30 and 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. I'm going to read it again. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Every word of God is pure. There's nothing wrong with the words of God. They are pure. They are true. They are right. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 2 again. Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 2. For he will be found of them that tempt him not, and showeth himself unto such as do not distrust him. So you got Israelites that are, I'm putting it in quotes, in the truth, but yet say, yeah, but. Yeah, but. Hmm. Um. One scribe. We have one scribe already. Brother Josiah. One scribe. Verse 3. For froward thoughts separate from God, and his power, when it is tried, reproveth the unwise. It corrects the unwise. Hmm. Verse 4 
For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. Hmm. For again, for into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. Hmm. Verse 5. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when a righteousness cometh in. Hmm. Holy Spirit of discipline. Holy Spirit of discipline. Let's, hmm. Wait a minute. John 8 and 31. John 8 and 31. The Holy Spirit of discipline. Hmm. Holy Spirit of discipline. Hmm. John 8 and 31. Um, again, the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send I'm jacking that up, but let's just, just go to Jack um, John eight thirty one. Let me let me make the point from here. I'm jacking it up. John eight thirty one. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples. Indeed. Hmm. If. It's a stipulation. If. If. So, the stipulation requirement for me being Christ's student or disciple that is discipline in God's laws. I got to be disciplined in order to follow the Lord. Hmm. I'm going to read uh, 31 again. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. So the disciples the followers of Christ will keep his word, will keep his commandments. Hmm. Let's go to this is another scripture. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 14. 2 Corinthians 5 and 14. Hmm. Second Corinthians 5, 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us For the love of Christ constraineth us, being disciplined in his word, in his commandments, constraineth us from our natural impulses. Our natural impulse is to sin. But in order to be a follower of Christ, we have to be dis disciplined in his word, his commandments, his laws. 
So now ask yourself, am I disciplined? Don't forget this. Being disciplined is not just one part of your life, your discipline. Being disciplined should follow every aspect of your life. Being disciplined should follow every aspect of your life, especially in God's commandments. Especially. I'm going to read 14 again. For the love of Christ constraineth us because we, we thus judge that if one died for all, then we were all dead. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we were all dead. And that ye, and that he died for all Israelites, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which dieth for them and rose again. Christ gave his life for us, even though we don't deserve it. So do what he says. Hmm. Let's go back to Second Ezra nine. Uh, where do we leave off? And nine. Second Ezra nine and nine. Second Ezra 9 and 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they have not cast them away, and they have cast them away despitefully, shall dwell in torments. But read verse 9 again. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they have they that have of cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. Oh God. Hmm. You know what torments is? Pain. Pain. That you will feel forever. Verse 10. For such as in their life had received benefits and have not known me. And they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not but despised it. So while we have grace and mercy by keeping his commandments, and the faith of Christ, there are those Israelites that despise that and hate it. Hmm. Verse 12. The same must know it after death by pain. Oh. The same must know it after death by pain. Hmm. Here's an example. Here is an example. You mean Isaiah 66 and 22. I'll start at verse 22. 
Isaiah 66 and 22. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall their seed and your name remain. Those that in the kingdom. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Hmm. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Hmm. Yeah. No, I'll call your questions till the end. I'm going to address that. Write that down. Write that down. I'm going to read 24 again. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. And they shall be and abhorring unto all flesh. These are those that wanted to do it their way. The loophole Negroes. These are the loophole Negroes. Yeah, but I feel, I think, hmm. Back to second address nine and 12 again. Oh boy, oh boy. Look, no, I'll see you later. I'll see you later. Second Exodus 9 and 12. Second Exodus 9 and 12. The same must know it after death by pain. Verse 13, and therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is and for whom the world is created. Bam. Woo. Wow. <laughs> Verse 13 again, and therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when but inquire how the righteous shall be saved whose the world is and for whom the world is created oh man oh man y'all realize that the uh, whole earth was created for the righteous Israelites. Everything in the earth and everyone on the earth. So, um, because I'm, I'm, I read this, especially because there are those that are focused, more focused on the second death, then the commandments, how we stay in the Lord's good graces. They are more focused on the second death. Oh, really? Hmm. This is the book of life to those that obey and follow 
His word, his commandments. Hmm. Let's go to second Ezra seven. And 20. Second Ezra 7 and 20. For there be many that perish in his life because they despise the law of God that is set before them. For God have given straight commandment to such as came what they should do to live even as they came and what they should observe to avoid punishment. Nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him, but spake against him and imagined vain things. Imagine vain things, lies, things that have no value. Verse 23, and deceived themselves by their wicked deeds and said of the Most High that he is not and knew not his ways. You realize that these rebels really believe in their minds that there's no God? Hmm. Verse 24. But his law have they despised and denied his co uh, covenants. In his statutes they have been not been faithful and have not performed his works. There goes that word again. What is the works. What is the works? Let's go to Exodus 18 and 20. Exodus 18 and 20. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk. And the work that they must do. That's the law, the commandments. It all goes back to the commandments and faith in Christ. You can't escape it. Hmm. Can't escape it. Um, second address. Seven verse fifty five. Second Ezra seven fifty five. And that the faces of them which have used abstinence shall shine above the stars, whereas our faces shall be blacker than darkness. For while we live, while we live and committed iniquity. We consider not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. Hmm. Verse 57. Then answered he me and said, This is the condition of the battle, which man that is upon which is born upon the earth shall fight. So this is the condition of the battle which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. Hmm. This is condition of the battle. Hmm. So we are in our spiritual war. Verse 58. That if ye be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast said, but if he get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I say. Hmm. For this is the life 
whereof Moses spake unto the people while he lived, saying, Choose thee life that thou mayest live. Oh, whew, let's go to that. Deuteronomy. Thirty and nineteen. Deuteronomy thirty, thirtieth chapter, nineteenth verse. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Hmm. You know, this is scary, 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 scary scripture. Scary, scary. I'm going to read it again. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So, you know, um, oh, Lord have mercy. The heavens record this day because no one will have an excuse. They were warned. They were given a choice. But those that won't obey chose death. It's recorded in heaven. Hmm. Verse 20, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. Hmm. So this was promised to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, those that will obey his commandments. The seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That means the seed is still here. That seed is still here. Mm. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew. 22 and verse, I'll start at verse 11. Matthew 22, verse 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. This is about the Wedding feast. Hmm. Verse 12. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. He had nothing to say. Then said the king, you know who the king is, Christ, to the servants, bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping 
and gnashing of teeth. I can hear a Christian now. Not my Jesus. Yes, yes. The real Jesus, the black Messiah. Verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. For many are called, but few are chosen. Hmm. Are you? Will he choose you? Will he choose you? The Lord's will. Lord's will. Make them, uh, go to Psalms 119 and 110. Psalms 119, verse 110. So in this day of day and age of the Rona, all these um the wicked is setting up all these traps for our people. It's setting up all these traps, these distractions to distract us from the mission. The mission is getting in the kingdom. That's the mission. Psalms 119 verse 110. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I erred not from thy precepts. The wicked have laid a snare for me. So the wicked, the wicked is Esau and his kingdom, everything in it, like politics, politics, I call it politics. His religions, his hell days. We got one coming up. It says, the wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I erred not from thy precepts. Oh, Lord have mercy. Give me Psalms 124 and 7. Psalms 124 and verse 7. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Verse 8. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. It says our help is in the name of the Lord. So does that mean that we're going to walk around saying the name over and over again? Hmm. What is the name of the Lord that will help us? So everybody has that uh, that name. Okay. Uh, let's go. Uh, I'm still waiting for your responses. What is the name of the Lord? What is the name of the Lord?
Mmm. Very good. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Uh, let's go to Revelation 19 and verse 11. Let's start at verse 11. Re Revelation 19 and verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness did he, he doth make war. Doth he doth judge and make war. Verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. I'm going to read that again. Verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. His name is called the Word of God. Huh. Let's go to Proverbs. Thirteen, chapter thirteen, verse fourteen. Proverbs thirteen, verse fourteen. Proverbs thirteen, verse fourteen. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. The law. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. You get caught up in these snares, these traps, you will die. You get distracted, with these traps, by these traps and snares, you will die. Hmm. Proverbs 29 and 25. Hmm. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25. The fear of man bringeth a snare. But whoso put his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to read that again. The fear of man bringeth a snare. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Hmm. So I'm going I'm I'm to say, say this. Um, those that uh, rely on conspiracy theories put their trust in those conspiracy theories and not the Lord. Because in spite of what Esau does or the nations do, if we stay in the commandments and the faith of Christ, the Lord got our back. Stay in the scriptures. That's our defense. But you got those. Well, you know, did you hear about this? Did you hear about? Okay. 
And we have the only God in the universe, the God of Israel. And we put our faith and our trust in him. Regardless of what these nations do, of what of or what ways they come up to kill us. You know, um, Deacon Asaph said something <laughs> on Friday Night Raw, and that resonated. Uh, he was going through all these um, things that people say, conspiracy theories. And that was a good setup, by the way, he did. And he said, who cares? Who cares? I don't. Hmm. I don't. Because when the Most High said that, how many fathers sends Christ? Go get my children. Go get them. And we get delivered. What are we worried about this man, these men for? What they're going to do? What are we worried about that? Look, uh, I read articles and news. I watch the news. And you know what? You know, the news is designed to distract you. To put fear in you? Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. So you mean to tell me we're going to be afraid of somebody that the Lord created? So we, we're going to be more afraid of these men and not be afraid of the Most High? Really? So who's your faith in? And will you be chosen? Will you be chosen? Uh, last scripture. Last scripture. Baruch 4. Baruch 4 and 28. Baruch 4 and 28. For as it was your mind to go astray from God, so being returned, seek him 10 times more. Seek him 10 times more. Give him all you got. Ten times more. So in your repentance, seek him. Ten times more. Give him all you got. Just when you think you've done all you can, still not enough. Because we're not in the kingdom yet. The work is not done. Here's the last scripture. I would see the last scripture. Here's the last scripture. Matthew 24 and 13. Matthew 24 and 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. That's the class. Any questions pertaining to class? Hmm. Any questions pertaining to class?
Yeah, all praise to the Most High. All praise to the Most High. All praises. Yes, indeed. Hmm. <laughs> Any questions pertaining to class? I'll wait a couple more minutes. Um, okay, it's a good question. So if you stray away, but return and repent, you can still be forgiven if you seek him 10 times more. Um, yeah, keep the commandments. Repent, repent, ask for forgiveness, and keep the commandments. Don't go back to sin again. Yes, there's only one unforgivable sin that's blaspheming the Holy Ghost. But yes, we can be forgiven for our sins. All right. Um, I don't think that's any, any more questions. I don't see any. All right. Um, Brother Josiah, all praise the most high for you, bro. Thank you again. Thank you again, bro. Thank you for scribing. Oh, let's wait. I just wanted to know so I know what to call him when I pray to him. Or thank him for waking me up. I already know, knowing that names won't get, you see, only keep, okay. All right. Yeah, um, when, the, when the Lord returns and we get in the kingdom, he will give us his name. Uh, that's another class. I was going to go somewhere. But um, don't forget to donate to the Booster Club. Uh, if somebody has the uh, email, email address for the Booster Club, please put that up. Because uh, Lord's will the prophets are going back and to spread the gospel to the Israelites spread across the globe. Don't forget your uh, to pray for leadership. Don't forget that the Lord will keep them and protect them and keep his spirit on them. Thank you. Uh, Sister Pam, thank you. Just keep the commandments and the faith of Christ. All right. Uh, pray for all Israel that they will repent and keep the commandments of God. All right. So it was an honor and a blessing to teach class to you all. I love y'all. All right. Stay in the spirit. Study, pray, and apply. Study, pray, and apply. And with that, say shalom. Most high Christ bless. Love you all.